Morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm doing a bit of testing this morning. This car boot season I seem to have accumulated um, vintage computing bits from the early 1980s. So um, let me flip you round and uh, show you what's going through the testing table. Right, first off is this uh, Commodore 64. I've got three of these I'm testing. Um, I picked this up at a boot fair. It had two power packs with it. But it's never advisable to use the power packs, even though they might be kicking out the right voltage. Yes, yeah, so being a bit of a, a spectrum boy, I've, I've never actually owned a Commodore. Um, now I've got three. Um, so this is quite exciting, really, turning this on for the first time. Um, a lot of the modern day tellies, I don't think you can sort of plug in and uh, lock it. This is going via the RF socket on the outside. And this old... Um, flat screen telly as, a, as an analogue option. So uh, let's get that on and see if this first one works. Okay, so I'm on analogue on the telly and I think it's tuned to around about um, channel 36, which is normally where these old um, gaming systems used to output to. I remember I did um, I did the channel 5 retune when that was launched and that was kicking out at 36. I think a lot of the videos were on 36 as well. But um, let's see what happens anyway. So let's turn that on. So that's on. And I think there's an on switch here. So I, yeah, I had an Amiga. I never had a Commodore. Right, okay. Well, the power's on. That's good. Nothing on the telly yet. Am I on the right channel? Oh, there we go. It just needed to... It probably, you know, needs a bit of a fine tune. If you can manual tune it, it will probably be better. And I imagine the uh, the RF lead probably this could do with a bit of a clean and you know there's, there's probably better ways to uh, attach it to your television. But yeah, there we go. Wow, it works. So let me just do my um, high level programming. How do you get it off caps lock? No idea. 20. Can you guess what I'm going to write? Yeah, 20 go to 10. Will that work? Will it let me? Oh, there we go. How do you, how do you stop it? Is there a, a break key or something? Delete? I've got no idea. Run stop. There we go, run stop. Okay, so that works. That's good. Right, let's do the next one. I'll tell you what I will do now is um, test the data set, the cassette player. And see if I can load a game up. That would be nuts if I can do that. This looks in immaculate condition, so I'm hopeful that it will work straight away. I will, if it doesn't work, I'll, I'll just clean the heads with um, some isopropyl alcohol, just give them a bit of a clean. And sometimes I always used to have to fiddle around with this, which is the tape head alignment. And I think you can get programs which help you with this, but obviously you have to get them on your Commodore to start with. Um, from my old days sort of fiddling about with this on the spectrum you just used to stick the tone right up to high as high as you can and then you'd fiddle that so it sounds not bassy but you know more trebly <laughs> and that, that's all the tips I can give you but uh, yeah, let me plug this in and see if it works well I plugged it in I did turn off the Commodore before I plugged it in just in case it's one of those things where you know You've got to be ultra careful. Right, that's just stopped. So let's just stop that tape. Yeah, I don't quite know what happened there. I'm, I've pressed play on this. Like I say, there's no, on these data sets, there's no um, volume or tone or anything. And there's also, when you connect it, there's this thing, which looks like some sort of earthing thing which I guess I should connect. I don't know where that connects. So um, if you do know, let me know. Right, I'm going to turn this off and see if I can get this working. And if it does, I'll um, I'll film it with a game ready to go. Well, it kind of seems to be working and not working. I mean, I'm not surprised this is like a, probably like a 30, 40 year old tape. And um, it's given me a load error. What I didn't know is it seems to be, the computer seems to be telling the data set to stop um, so yeah it plays and then just stops by itself um, which is a bit weird and I'm getting this uh, run error so 
yeah, not too worried. I think it's down to the tapes. I might check a few other tapes, but the data set does seem to be working. Let's get onto the Spectrum and uh, the other Commodores. Right, this takes me back. Um, so there's no on switch for this, so you just plug it in. I don't know whether I should turn it off at the plug and then plug it in, but let's just go for it. Okay, so that's in. Again, nothing on the telly, but... There was something there. Like I, ah, like I say, sometimes sort of changing the channel is to fine tune on these things. Okay, I'm going to have to go into tuning mode and then fiddle about with it. I'll be back in a minute. Right, there we go. I find with these, I tend to go into sort of auto tune and it tunes all the channels. And you, you sit in there for 10 minutes. But I've just done a manual tune it's on an auto fine tune but just chucking channel 36 and it's it's found it so yeah here we go again oh god this it's, it's ridiculous but you know this this is what i spent absolutely tons of time on where's the uh <laughs> and i'm just remembering what a pain it is to type on these things I don't know where the um, speech marks are. Are they on the P? Oh yeah, there we go. P. P, 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 P. How do you go back? No idea. Delete. Where's delete? Well, let's, let's type P. Let's be childish about this. Uh, go to 10. There we go. I'll go to 1. Well, that will do. Oh, variable not found. I don't, I don't know how you edit this. But that is working, which is good. I, like I said, I don't want to have it on for um, too long, so I'm going to turn it off now and check the other Commodores. Yeah, so this is a bread bin version of the Commodore. Um, I think the, the F keys are a different colour inside. You, you actually can find out the, the kind of year it was released and the versions by kind of referring to... Uh, this and the board will have a, a kind of number printed on it. I think it's a serial number. So let me just um, get this open and show you. I've just spotted there. There is a, like a serial number B two five zero eight three oh three eight. So you probably could look that up as well. Various serial numbers on that. I've opened it upside down, so that's good, isn't it? Let me turn it over. So here we go. Commodore logo there, and yeah, just different colour. F keys. No yellowing on this at all. Looks absolutely fantastic. Um, wouldn't use that. You could test that to see if it's kicking out 9 volts and I think it's 5 five volts. It's, it's got two different voltage lines so yeah you can look up things on YouTube to how to do that. But um, I'm going to use the um, aftermarket power supply that I bought and fingers crossed it works because it does look in fabulous condition. Looking good. Not a fabulous picture coming out, but you know, I could probably open it up and give it a clean up and maybe clean the RF. You can um, upgrade your um, outputs to have composite leads and things like that, but I'm not too fussed about that. I do want to keep it sort of a, a, as original as possible. I'm just glad that um, it's not a dud. So that is working. Um, I will look up, like I say, this one. I think it might be a fairly early release because of the colour of the um, the F keys, but I could be completely wrong on that. I mean, I think Commodore tended to use bits of, um, you know, casing and stuff which were lying around the factory, and, it, you know, you can never be too sure. But like I say, there on the motherboard, there is normally a, a um, I think it's either a serial number or a release number where you can actually look these things up and find out what the rarer ones are. Um, so one more to do and then I'm done. Slightly smaller Commodore logo on this one. What's going on here? Oh, there we go. And again, in great condition. I will keep the original power pack, you know, with this, even though I'm not using it just for completeness. But uh, let's get this one on and see if the red light comes on. 
Yeah, that one's good as well. So that is fantastic. That's three Commodores working and the Spectrum that's working. It's weird wanting a red light, you know, having dealing with Xboxes and you don't want to see a red light. Um, but that is great. Like I say, I'm probably going to keep all three of these and get these set up in some sort of, um, you know, retro thing, as you do see quite a lot of. Um, but yeah, it's a kind of like start for me uh, doing this, I, especially with the Commodores. I was very much sort of originally Atari 2600 and then got Spectrum and then Amiga. And then after that, it was kind of, um, well, either. Let me turn around. Hang on a second. Yeah, I didn't do consoles for a long time. I think the first console I bought was a, a PS2. I had played on the SNES and Mega Drive, but um, never really got into much myself. This is really much more my era. And it's quite good at boot fits because you can pick up, you know, if you see tapes uh, for Spectrums or Commodores, you can pick up bundles um, for good money or if they're individual, I tend to pay like 50p. I wouldn't pay much more than that. Um, so good to get some of the big box um, stuff or biggish box, uh, like some of the Ultimate stuff and some of the Imagine stuff, US Gold stuff. Looking forward to sort of maybe getting a few bits and bobs of that. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Probably if you're not into computers, you, you wouldn't enjoy that. Um, there's lots of great channels out of this out there for this retro stuff. There's, um, I think there's Retro Recipes is one I uh, watch a lot. And then there's the 8-Bit Guy and all those other sort of like guys who are just crazy about this sort of stuff. Um, I'm just starting out, so it's quite exciting. Um, but yeah, I'll be on the lookout for more Commodore and Spectrum stuff. And I want to get an Amiga. I have got an ST as well, which I need to test. Um, but I need to check out, you know, I'm not going to blow that up with the power supply that I've got because I've just got one of those variable voltage things from Amazon, um, which could go in it. But like I say, I don't want to ruin it. Anyway, for now, um, that's all from me. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you soon.